Hey art nerds! So today we're going to take a look at two Arteza products. These were requested by Maddie and I purchased them from the Arteza website and I've got a little bit of an interesting story about that. So half of the purchase, this pad here and a set of the twin tip markers that I'm going to review soon came from Amazon and then about a week later this pack of watercolor paper came all on its lonesome. So if you're purchasing from the Arteza site because they sometimes carry products that Amazon does not have, A, you're going to be paying more. They're more expensive and B, they're shipped through Amazon anyway. So what gives Arteza? Another thing I want to point out, I have tried Arteza products in the past. I'm not that impressed with their quality. In fact, I have an unboxing swatch review of the Arteza watercolors that you guys can check out right here if you want to see them. Those are the two watercolors. If you guys really, 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 really want, I will do the half pans as well at some point in the future, but I really didn't like the tubes. They remind me a lot of Reeves watercolors. So I'm just caveating that because I might not like these. This might not be a very positive review based on past Arteza performance. They didn't ask me to review these. My viewers asked me to review these, and I am always honest with you guys. So I just wanted to be honest about that. So I want to review these in a hurry because I'm teaching a watercolor workshop at MTAC and if these papers are good, I can distribute them to my participants, to those taking my wonderful watercolor workshop. So fingers crossed that they're good because I bought them because they're both cotton rag papers. So what's neat about this here is it's cotton rag and you are supposed to be able to paint on both sides and this is their expert line and you get 40 sheets in here. So it is 100% cotton mold made cold press, double sided, do 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 do, acid free, glue bound, ideal for watercolor techniques and mixed media. Two sides and it's 140 pounds, which is what I usually paint on anyway. These, and I will cut them open in a moment, these are two watercolor pads, it's a twofer, and I think these are cotton rag as well. This is their premium line, this is their expert line. So it'll also be interesting to see how the two compare. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab an X-Acto blade and separate this pack. I also wanna point out that this is kind of an unusual watercolor paper review for me. I do review watercolor papers, but I usually review them over a long period of time, over several paintings, and I usually review them over on my blog, netasoup.blogspot.com. Part of the reason I'm doing this on video is Arteza tends to appeal to younger artists who are looking for kind of study art supplies, art supplies that they can practice with. So I thought this might be able, this review would be able to reach people who are curious about it better if I did it on YouTube. So we're going to take a look at the premium 32 color sheets first. Now, I deal with cotton rag paper pretty frequently. I paint my Kara pages on cellulose paper, but I paint everything else on cotton rag paper. I definitely have some favorites, and I definitely have some opinions. So I'm going to be comparing these papers to my favorites. I'm going to be comparing them to arches in the tape-bound pads, and I'm going to be comparing it to Blick Studio. I'm going to be comparing it to Canton Moulin de Roy and I'm going to be comparing it to Langton, Langton Prestige. So if you're not familiar with any of those brands, it's gonna be a little bit harder for you to find, decide if this is really the paper for you, but that's okay. Hopefully this review will still be useful. So the pad has fairly thick chipboard on one side, but not on the other. One of my pads arrived dented, which isn't that big of a deal, and they were sandwiched together with the sensitive innards on the inside. I really like the co cover illustration they chose. This is really pretty. If I saw this in a store, I would be more likely to pick it up because as you guys know, I have kind of an anime or a manga aesthetic to my art. So I like this kind of stuff and I'm glad to see a company recognizing that anime and manga artists are going to be purchasing their products too. So we get 32 sheets. These are single sided. They're not double sided. This is the 9 inch by 12 inch pad, which is a good, fairly standard size. It's 140 pound watercolor paper, which does not mean this is 140 pounds. It means I think it's like a ream of paper at a certain size would weigh 140 pounds, something like that. Anyway, generally I have found that 140 pound paper, ooh, this is thin for 140 pound paper. Wow. 
that's going to be interesting. This also doesn't say anything about whether or not it is cotton rag or cellulose based. If it's cellulose based, I'm going to be pretty disappointed because I have purchased their watercolor, like their little watercolor sketchbook. Let me see if I can find that. Do do do! I found it. So this is their also premium, and this is their little sketchbook. It is cellulose base and I don't really like it I don't like the texture of the paper it takes watercolor okay but I'm really not a fan of like these sort of evenly textured watercolor papers I like the ones that are excuse me a little bit more um, mottled or uh, uneven so you guys can really see it right here some people do like this I don't this is just personal preference it isn't particularly poor but I haven't had a chance to really put it through its paces all the way yet so let's take a look and it looks like this paper has, I apologize, looks like it has that same texture. It's really hard for me to show y'all. Oh, you can see it there. I just really don't like that kind of uneven texture, that kind of linen paper texture. The other side does not have any texture at all. So I would bet that this is a cellulose paper, which is a little disappointing. I was hoping I could get a good deal on cellulose paper for my students, unfortunate, I mean cotton rag paper for my students, unfortunately. This is not the one. And I will have prices for you guys down in the description below, what you can get it for on Amazon and what I paid for it, which is, I paid more because I bought it from the RTSA site. And you get 62 total sheets, so I mean you get a lot of paper, but I'm not really a fan, I don't like buffets. I'm not really a fan of like a lot of something I'm just kind of mediocre on. I'd rather have a little something that I really like. So we're going to explore this a little bit more in a minute. Let's take a look at their expert pad. I think they're trying to do something like what that their company Strathmore does with the 300, 400, and 500 series. So I'm going to grab an X-Acto blade and get this cut open. And you can care that tell they cared about this one. I cannot word today. You can tell they cared about this one because they put little feeties on all four corners to protect it in transit. So let's take a look at their expert cotton rag watercolor paper. It has a matte cover that is a little dusty. The cover's a little bit thicker. Oh, okay. All right. This is this is more what I'm talking about. This is the right texture. This already starts to feel like cotton rag paper. It's not, it's uniform, but it's a different kind of uniform. It's more like diamonds and less like little squares. Um, this is definitely more what I wanted. And the other side has a texture as well. I mean, a lot of watercolor papers are technically double-sided watercolor papers. You could technically paint on either side. That would be great in maybe a sketchbook, except then you'd get smearing. Um, like this, I guess the use case would be like, oh, I screwed up. Let me just flip it and use the other side. So what I usually test for when I'm testing watercolor papers is I want to see if it's going to run through my printer. So if I can print blue lines on it, I want to see if the blue lines will lift from said paper. And I want to see just how it takes watercolor, how it handles. I should be able to paint something like this. I'm not saying I'm going to, but I should be able to if it if they're gonna have it on the cover, I should be able to paint it on the paper. And same goes for this over here. If they're gonna have it on the cover, I should be able to paint it on the paper. The paper should be able to handle that, the kind of techniques that I would need to use. Otherwise, it's kind of false advertising. Now, I know that some artists are like, if they were in the avatar world, they'd be art supply vendors. They can get anything to do anything they want. They can get Crayola, Crayola washable watercolors to be beautiful, beautiful artist quality watercolors and Lord knows I can't do that. So, you know, I know there's some artists who are going to be able to bend it to their will. Sometimes I can do that, sometimes I cannot. As always, I will be honest with you guys about my experiences, what I like about a product, what I don't like about a product, and what is frustrating about a product because honestly, I value y'all's good opinion of me more than I value working with any company. And I'm not working with Arteza, so <laughs> y'all know the team might just flow. So, just a quick recap, feeling good about the, the cotton rag, feeling really kind of salt already about the premium watercolor sheets because if I remember correctly, um, the Amazon listing says that this is cotton rag paper. It does not seem like it's cotton rag paper, but y'all, there are a few ways that we can find out. 
Although honestly, it should be listed on here if it is. Usually when it doesn't tell you what it is, it's because it's cellulose and I wish they were required to disclose that. See, they're very proud of the cotton rag up there. Anyway, I think it's time to uh, start putting these to the test. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to try swatching some of my favorite watercolors on these two different papers. So we're going to use some Da Vinci watercolors. I think I'm also going to grab the Arteza Tube watercolors so we can do a nice comparison. But I wanted to also share the prices that I paid for these on the Arteza site. And I'm going to pop that in just so that you guys can see them. But I paid a whopping $25.99 for 14 sheets of double-sided watercolor paper. I want y'all to compare that with arches, which for around 12 to 14 sheets is usually around 14 to $15. It is definitely not $25.99. And then for our wonderful cellulose paper, pack of two, I paid $22.98. Now, when I want bulk cellulose paper, I usually get Fabriano Studio because you can get it in packs of 50 and you can get it in various sizes. I have an 11 by 14 pack that I usually use for my students. So, you know, Arteza is kind of known for being inexpensive and they claim their artist quality, but they're kind of pricey. Um, if you guys only do your art supply shopping at Michaels and Amazon, I highly recommend you check out sites like Plaza, Jerry's, and Dick Blick for better pricing. Alright, so we're going to do it head to head, and I would drum roll, but that will make my camera jiggle. So we're going to have the cotton on the left, and we're going to have the probably cellulose on the right. So I have assembled my materials, my Da Vinci watercolors. These are my Arteza tube watercolors that I've put into half pans. I just want to point out how a lot of their products say premium, like it's premium, like it's artist quality, but they're not really promising like professional quality, just premium and all the thoughts that premium seems to bring into your mind, but they promise nothing. But I'll tell you something, these things smell like Reeves. I would not call these premium, and you guys are going to see in a moment. Or you could check out the whole unboxing swatch for this. I know, I'm being salty. So I also went back to the Amazon listing to see what was promised. And uh, these and these are all kind of listed under the same listing. So uh, I will include screenshots so you guys can see. But I could see how that could be a little bit confusing for people. So this definitely feels like cotton rag watercolor paper. And this definitely does not feel like cotton rag watercolor paper. It definitely feels like cellulose watercolor paper. And doing a side by side comparison is going to take up just about my whole screen. Give me a sec and I'll try to adjust that. Okay, so I have my Da Vinci watercolors to start with. These are actually artist quality watercolors and they're made in the US like Arteza, except they're really nice and I really, really like them. And I highly recommend them and they've made it on several of my best of kind of lists. So I feel really good about them. What's nice about the Da Vinci's is you don't actually have to pre-activate them, they're liquid poured. So we're just gonna work straight on to the paper. So this is our supposed cotton rag paper. I'm gonna blend it out. And really the best way to test watercolor paper and why I don't normally test watercolor paper quite in this manner is it just it's best to just do an illustration, like an actual full-blown illustration on it and see what the paper is capable of handling. So this is not block bound. It is a pad. It is loose on one side. It is, however, glue bound on the top side. And the paper doesn't feel bad. It feels fairly comparable with other cotton rag papers. Really the only way I'm going to be able to tell you guys if it's a buy or a skip is, you know, to do a full field test review, which you guys will just have to stick around, keep an eye on this channel, consider subscribing for that. So now that you've seen my setup, I'm going to try and pull in a little bit more tightly so that hopefully you can see 
the colors a little bit better. But I'm trying to introduce a lot of water and I'm trying to kind of invite some blending. I mean, the, the, what this is gonna boil down to is even if this paper performs well, behaves well, it's still more expensive than other artist quality papers. It's more expensive than Arches. It's more expensive than Blick Premier. It's more expensive than Canton Moulin de Roy. So it's kind of hard to justify spending extra money just so you can buy Arteza brand product when there are better products that are more established, that are more well known. They're carried by more companies than just Amazon and Arteza. But I will try to fully reserve my judgment. And I'm definitely gonna be painting on both sides of this paper because when you make, when you advertise something, that's usually what has Becca gunning for you. So what I'm gonna be looking for is how bright the colors are when they dry, how easy it is to blend the colors out, how the colors sediment onto the paper. Um, I might do a lift test with them, etc. And then in a future video, I will do a field test with it. But I think I'm not gonna do a field test with the cellulose paper. I'm just gonna save that for the cotton rag paper. Another thing about watercolors, just in general, you can paint with very cheap watercolors on nice paper and it'll look good, and you can paint with really nice watercolors on cheap paper and it'll look good, but you usually can't get away with painting on cheap on cheap. And the reason I'm testing the, well I already explained one of the reasons, but another one of the reasons is I was really hoping both of these would be cotton rag watercolor papers and that I could use this one during my MTAC workshop. There's a little bit cast shadow on the paper. I had to kind of rearrange everything. I will take photos though. And the cellulose paper might not be terrible paper, I just don't really like this kind of really even linen sort of texture. I don't think it really allows like the pigments in most watercolors to shine. It's not that it's particularly difficult or that the colors fade. I mean, you guys saw I used the little Arteza watercolor sketchbook as kind of a, a swatching book when I buy new colors. What I'd like to see Arteza offer is just something new. Bring something new to the market, please. Quit just copying what everybody else is doing. Like, what would be nice is put this cotton rag paper in a sketchbook form, because I'd really like to have a nice little cotton rag sketchbook, and nobody makes those. I mean, Handbook has the little hardbound ones, but I'm talking about something spiral bound that's travel ready. Because water, pa water, cotton rag watercolor paper handles a lot differently from cellulose watercolor paper. And when you're traveling, sometimes you want to do a lot of wet into wet techniques, and that's where cotton rag really shines. Another thing is that cotton rag paper, the colors, the pigments are going to soak into the fibers. 
So you can do more layers, you can build up more color. Whereas with cellulose, it all sits kind of on the surface. So maybe colors appear more bright, but it's gonna be harder to layer. It's going to lift more easily. Colors are gonna to start to muddy. And please, in your marketing and in your listings, Arteza, be clear about what your customers are actually getting. They had like five different packs from children's grade to that, the cotton rag paper we're taking a look at, which is buckling a little bit, but that's not really surprising. What's gonna be a better test is how these fare when they dry. But anyway, it had like children's grade stuff next to adult stuff, and there wasn't really a fair or a clear delineation between them. I mean, it basically falls to the customers who are leaving reviews to point that information out. So have these as separate listings and have the actual materials these are made of as part of the listing. It is an actual feature that pe people purchase for, and it's something your customers, especially your professional artists and your reviewer customers, do care about. All right, I'm gonna go switch my water out and we're gonna try swatching the Arteza watercolors. All right, so I have here my Arteza tube watercolors. As you can see, when they dry, they cracked pretty badly. They're also pretty vivid in the pans. That's because they're full of optical brighteners, which are going to you know, change the mass tone so that it's brighter, but it means the paints are going to go down chalkier. I'm gonna pop this underneath. I know they also sell half pan sets, but you know, given the performance of their tube watercolors, I don't think I wanna even bother with it. So what I'm gonna do with these, I used a little bit of extra gum Arabic just to kind of glue the watercolors into the bottom of the pans because they were flaking out so badly that it was becoming unworkable. So I'm gonna add some water to each of these half pans and give it a moment to soak in before we start swatching. So I am currently using a silver black velvet. This is a mixture of synthetic and squirrel and it's usually a pretty good all-rounder. Hopefully this will be good enough for these watercolors. swatch every color. This is a 24 color set. I'm not going to swatch every color. I'm just going to do maybe a total of 12. Then we're going to let both brands dry out and I'm going to do a lift test. Now generally lift testing doesn't really tell you a whole lot. Uh, some colors are more likely to lift than others. Some papers are more likely to lift than others. So it's a com combination of factors. But we're gonna look for patterns. We're gonna look to see if one type of paper consistently lifts more frequently than the other, or if certain colors just lift from either paper, those kind of patterns. I'm just drip dropping water all over the place today. And if you're enjoying this video, do me a favor and send it off to a friend. Especially if you have a friend who is interested on, in art and is thinking about trying Arteza products themselves. And if you guys are curious, I'd be happy to do a video on great affordable alternatives. Since I know one of the big selling points or, well, there's two, I guess, big selling points is how cheap Arteza is sometimes. These were not cheap. Their more established competitor products are actually cheaper. Um, and also the fact that you can get it on Amazon, so you can get it with free two-day shipping if you have Prime. I know that's kind of a big deal, but there's a lot of really great 
art supplies that you can get on Amazon if that is the selling point for you. Also, I have loads of really helpful watercolor, alcohol marker, and other art supply videos here on this channel. So, if you're curious about how something handles, stick around, search around, and if you don't see or can't find what you're looking for, let me know. I love sharing my knowledge and experience with the art community. And I know how difficult it can be shopping for art supplies when you don't really have a lot of experience and you don't necessarily know what you're looking for yet. So I'm also happy to make curated recommendations. I hope you guys can see, and if not, I will get all up close and personal with my camera, but I hope you guys can kind of see the even pattern over here. It's much less noticeable over on this one. I feel like having the even pattern just kind of makes it look like it's like a Photoshop background or something rather than like an actual physical piece of paper. And not that there's anything wrong with Photoshop. I use Photoshop all the time, but I definitely don't want my art to look overly mechanical. sampling of the colors. We only got eight from the Arteza line. I guess we could do two more. We could do, let's see, we did the purple. Let's see, maybe we can do a lighter blue. So kind of like a cobalt blue. Or a cerulean blue. Because I don't think this set has a blue green in it. Maybe I missed it. And then we can do a brown. And let me know if you guys want to see a field test of the Arteza watercolors on one of the two Arteza papers. Do a bam bam. dry. And after it dries, we're going to come back to it and take a look at it. We're going to do some lift tests. See if we can draw any conclusions from this before we do our field test video.
All right, so these have dried. I do want to point out that normally, whether I'm using cotton rag or cellulose paper, I would stretch it and adhere it to something to provide some support. I did not do that in this case. I left them on their pads. I will remove them from their pads now and we can see if they're easy to remove. The cotton rag is moderately easy to remove. It's about the same difficulty as arches, honestly. And let's try the cellulose. Just about the same. Both of them are glue bound with clear glue at the top. So you can see it dried a little bit kipped up. This one a little less so. Next we are going to do our lift test. So I'm going to use, actually I don't want to use a synthetic brush this time. I want to be generous. I'm going to use the same brush I used to apply the paint, a cup of clear water. And I guess I'm going to use a paper towel possibly to blot it up. But what we're looking for is color movement. How likely is color to reactivate and move on either of these papers? So at the top is our Da Vinci colors. At the bottom are our Arteza colors. Mm. Get all up and juicy in the area that has the most color. So with the yellow, we're getting a little bit of movement, but you guys saw I was kind of really working the area, scrubbing it a fair bit. It seems like, and it might be a little early to say this, but it seems like the Da Vinci colors on the cotton rag are less likely to reactivate and lift. So this could be a good paper if you do layered watercolor. As you can see, there is a little bit of reactivation. Get all up on it so you guys can see. But you know, some colors are going to be naturally more likely to lift up. Like sedimenting colors tend to be more prone to lifting than staining colors. So this phthalo blue here, there's some movement. But I would feel confident painting a layered watercolor illustration on this paper. I look forward to seeing how it runs through my printer. But that's going to be in our field test video. Most of these colors, now this sail is really starting to move a bit, but I'm also leaving the water pooled on the paper. So yeah, generally the Da Vinci colors are going to stay where they were put on the Arteza cotton rag paper. Now we're going to do the same thing to the Arteza watercolors down here at the bottom. As I mentioned earlier in this video, cotton rag papers tend to be a best case scenario. You can use nice paints, you can use cheap paints on them. Because the paint soaks into the fibers, it's less likely to lift and it's less likely to reactivate. And remember, this is touted as double-sided watercolor paper. So we're going to have to check out the other side of the paper before the end of the review. And I'm really saturating this paper. So we're going to see if it dries all cockled. And buckle that would be a reason why you'd want to possibly stretch your watercolor paper and I have loads of tutorials here on this channel where I demonstrate how to do that if you don't know how it's actually very simple okay so it looks like everything stays in place we do have a little bit of color migration but it's not shocking we did scrub and we did leave a lot of water on the paper, so this is not a shock to me at all. I feel like this is pretty standard for any cot uh, cellulose, no, cotton rag, there we go. Cotton rag watercolor paper. So I'm gonna put this aside to dry, and we're gonna take a look at our cellulose Arteza watercolor paper. So again, we are beginning with our Da Vinci watercolors. These seem much more prone to activate but really I should do the full test before I speak but I think you guys can see that they're starting to lift up a little bit that's particularly bad here and I'm using a very soft brush this is squirrel synthetic mix 
So it's a really soft kind of brush. It's not a particularly scrubby brush. And this is not really a surprise to me because cellulose papers, the watercolor again tends to sit on the surface of the paper rather soaking in and bonding with the fibers. So if you struggle with muddy watercolors and you're using nice watercolor but you're using cellulose paper, this could be one of the reasons why your watercolors are muddy. I think if you try out cotton rag paper, you may be pleasantly surprised. And I do know cotton rag paper is pretty cost prohibitive, so I usually paint my Kara pages on um, Canson Mont Ball because I find that it is economical and handles a lot like a watercolor paper. All right, so this was our Da Vinci watercolor swatches. A lot of movement with them. Let's shift on down to our Arteza swatches. So now we have inexpensive paint on inexpensive paper. I also expect this paper to cockle quite a bit. Cellulose papers are pretty prone to cockling when dry. Another thing is when you stretch your watercolor paper, it's gonna have a memory. So if you stretch it and it's a humid day and it's stretched kind of cockled, every time you re-wet it, it's going to pick those traits back up again. I mean, if you're painting a watercolor comic or if you're painting on a very regular basis, like daily, you can't really control the weather, but that is something to keep in mind. On the particularly humid days, maybe doing some admin tasks would be a better choice. Okay, so it seems like the Arteza watercolors are also really prone to kind of reactivating and moving. Both of these papers are pretty saturated, so I'm going to let them dry out and we're gonna check back in. But something else I wanted to point out is that the water soaked into the cotton rag paper, whereas it's kind of sitting and pooling on the surface of the cellulose paper, which is another reason why cellulose can be a harder paper to work with. Okay, art nerds, these have finally dried. Again, nothing was stretched, nothing was given any sort of support. So there definitely is some kipping. It's a little bit more noticeable though in the cellulose based paper. So the next thing I wanna do is, this is supposed to be double sided paper. We're supposed to be able to paint on both sides. So I'm actually going to flip both of them over and uh, just try applying some paint and seeing how both backs of the paper kind of take that paint. All right, so I have pre-activated my Arteza paints. That's what I'm gonna go ahead and use for the backs of this paper. And while this side of the cotton rag paper does indeed feel receptive to watercolor, it doesn't feel any more receptive than any other cotton rag watercolor paper I've tried. So I think what I'd like to do for this, basically make a mud test, do some color blending, just generally make a mess and that way we can see how well the papers handle being worked on both sides. It's not really gonna give us a good idea though of what the cellulose paper is super capable of. But it will be fun to see how the back handles. And I know that some of the other reviewers and artists over on Amazon said that you could use the back if you so desired. So it seems like the back of this cotton rag paper is fairly receptive to watercolor. Colors are blending readily. It's accepting water, although the water is kind of just pooling on it. So in other art videos, I've mentioned that cellulose based paper is a little bit, uh, it dries quicker 
what really happens is if it is a dry day, it's going to evaporate from the paper surface faster. So if it's a wet day, it's going to sit on the paper surface. Like we're getting kind of an opportunity to swatch all of the Arteza colors again. I'm really feeling like I should do my Arteza field test on the Arteza cotton rag. Let me know in the comments below if you would prefer to see it on the Arteza cotton rag or on the Arteza cellulose. Okay, so that was kind of a drive-by of the cotton rag. Let's give that a chance to dry and flip on over. Sorry, pardon my reach. So let's do the cellulose paper now. Move this over to the side, move this over, move this closer. All right, so this side does not really have any sort of texture on it. It's pretty smooth. It's almost like painting on Bristol. I know some people like painting on Bristol, but I would prefer to paint on a hot press cotton rag paper than on Bristol itself. It's a little bit more receptive to watercolor. And everything's just kind of sitting on the surface. I've also noticed though that my colors are kind of sitting on the surface over here as well. So after I apply my color, I'm going to try lifting it, and I have a feeling, just call it a prediction, let's say it's a premonition, I have a feeling that it's going to lift really easily from this surface because there's no grooves for it to really adhere to, and it's all just sort of sitting on top. It's kind of fun to do a two paper test in one video, especially two different papers from the same brand. This really puts things in perspective and I'd probably have a different opinion of the cotton rag paper if I were pitting it directly against another cotton rag like Arches or Blick Studio or Legion or Daler Rowney Langton Prestige or Moulin de Roy or Shizen. But because we are comparing it directly against Arteza Cellulose paper, definitely seems like the preferable paper of the two. What do you guys think? Which one would you rather work with? The only thing that really bulks me about the price of the cotton, well, I spoiled it. The only thing that really bulks me about the cotton rag is the price. I can definitely get cheaper cotton rag papers elsewhere. Yeah, just look how it's pooling, running, and the paper's starting to buckle. I do not think that the cellulose paper is really designed for us to paint on the backs. All right, so that is paint applied. I'm just gonna move it over slightly so you guys can see it better. We're gonna let it dry and then we're gonna check in on it. So it's been about 10 minutes and I wanted to show you guys that the paint on the back of the cellulose paper is still pooled and that is again because it's not getting sucked down into the fibers, it has to evaporate into the atmosphere. We can speed that up by picking it up with a thirsty brush or a paper towel, but I didn't think it was worth noting. I also think the colors are a lot more muted on the back of the paper than they were on the front. The back of the cotton rag seems about the same. It did take a little bit longer to dry with this green taking the longest, and it's not like there was like a heavy application of water on this side. So um, I think it's probably due to the atmosphere outside it wants to rain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to soak up this extra paint 
for extra water. Allow that to dry and then we're going to try doing a lift test on the reverse side of these papers. Okay, so this is still wet. It's been quite a while. While you could paint on the back of the cellulose paper, I don't really think that's a great idea. So let's throw a lot of water on both sides and see how much movement we get. And this is just the Arteza paints. These are not the Da Vinci paints that we used on the other side. And remember, this is touted as being paintable on both sides, and we have done just that. It's also managed, it's a little bit buckly, a little bit crinkly, but it's not too, too bad. And if you'd stretch this, I think it would be much more buckle resistant. That's the point of stretching, right? So your knees don't buckle and your paper doesn't buckle. But yeah, the paint seems fairly resistant to moving. And it has the same sort of texture as the front has. What would be nice, although it's probably not something Ortiz is going to do, and it might not even be feasible, is to have a cold press texture on one side and a hot press texture on the other. All right, now we're on to our cellulose paper. Now the back probably takes markers great because it's a little bit smoother, but it basically lifts right up. So if you're going to be painting on the back of this paper, just keep in mind there's nothing to kind of hold the paint onto it. So if you try to do layers, the layers are going to lift up. You could use this for alcohol markers and then just do maybe some watercolor glazes. That could be a good use for this paper or this side of the paper. But I wouldn't really treat the Arteza cellulose paper as a double-sided paper. Not that it's marketed as such, but you know, if we're testing one, we might as well test both. So it's pretty lift prone, which I think is going to make it for, make for a very muddy painting experience as all your colors kind of lift up and mix with one another, whether you like it or not. And I have thrown a lot of water at this paper. So it's not surprising that it's starting to buckle again. And over here we have some lifting with the browns. Let's actually, let's go back over here into our cellulose and just kind of move the brush around. Kind of scrub it. But in general, it does seem fine. So I think that about does it for this unboxing watch. Alright, that about does it for my Arteza watercolor paper unboxing swatch. I've switched them around again. So this is the back of the cotton rag paper. This is the back of the cellulose paper. My verdict as of right now is you can get cheaper and better of both types of paper. The cotton rag paper isn't bad, but you can get Arches, you can get Blick Premier, you can get Moulin de Roy cheaper. Oh, you can get Fluid 100, you can get, oh, an Aqua. Uh, Legion hot press and cold press. Those are both cotton rag watercolor papers. You can get a lot of cotton rag watercolor papers in the same size, same page count for the same price or less. So I'm really not that impressed. And the cellulose paper, you do get a lot of it, but you can get uh, like Montval, uh, 10 by 15 Montval sheets of watercolor cold press paper, also a cellulose based watercolor paper. You can get 12 of those for about $9. You can get Canton XL for less. You can get Fabriano Studio for less. So really the prices are not impressive. And the, por the performance is just not good enough to make up the difference. So 
I would say pass. It's just not really worth it. If you see them on sale, if you see the cold press watercolor cotton rag paper from $9 a pad, that would be good. I would jump on that deal. But other than that, I'm just not really impressed with the price or with the quality. I don't think Arteza is offering anything better or anything more at a better value than Blick store brand or Plaza store brand or Jerry store brand or many brand names are currently offering. I want to thank you guys so much for watching this unbox and swatch video. I hope it was useful, helpful, and informative for you guys and I hope it helped you make a good decision about what art supplies you're going to invest your money in. I have loads of great watercolor and watercolor supply tutorials here on this channel and over at natosoup.blogspot.com in my watercolor basics series. So if you are looking for more, if you're trying to decide between what brands to buy or if you want a second opinion, I highly recommend you search both of those places first. If you want to know how I feel about any art supply, I do have an art supply request form that you can fill out. I'll take it to consideration. I'll put it to a vote through my art nerds on Patreon. And who knows, we might end up reviewing it. I'm a pretty big sucker for art supplies, so it's not really hard to twist my arm. But I hope that this was helpful, useful, and informative for you guys. And I hope you guys will consider sticking around, maybe helping me do what I do by subscribing and clicking that bell notification so you never miss a video. If you want to see me demonstrate Art Supplies Live, make sure you tune in on Fridays at 8 p.m. CST for my Power Hour Art Stream. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope to see you guys again really soon. Bye, guys!